All right, we're going to take a look at the constant velocity particle model discovery worksheet, looking at position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. Um, so the first thing that you're going to need to do for this is to graph your data. And once you have it graphed, you can draw a straight line through it because all of these are in a straight line. Now, if you do not have a straight line, that means that you probably graphed this wrong um, because you do need to make sure that the numbers on the bottom are all even. So if you count by ones, you need to count by ones the whole time. And then going up, I chose to count by fours. You could count by anything you wanted. Um, but you just need to make sure that whatever you count by, you count by the same number for every single line. So I went 4, 8, 12. You could have done 5, 10, 15. But you have to make sure it's the same the whole time. Otherwise, you will not get a straight line. All right, so once you've done that, I'm going to plot. I've plotted the position versus time graph. Um, now I need to explain how I can use the graph to determine how far he was from the origin at three seconds. So I'm going to look at this and at three seconds, I'm going to follow this up and then follow it over. Um, and that looks like it's about 14. So I describe it as look at three seconds, trace up to the line and then go to the left when you hit the line to see the position. Or if you wanted to draw an arrow, you go like this to the line and then just go to the left. And then that could be our, your explanation as well. If you were going to describe how fast Chris was moving, what would his speed or velocity be? Um, the way you do this um, is you are going to look at the slope. Um, so the slope um, is equal to the velocity on a position versus time graph. So to do that, you would just do rise over run. Um, and I like to pick dots on my graph. So I'm going to pick this spot and this spot. Please pick dots that are farther away from each other. Don't pick dots that are right next to each other. Um, that way your slope will be more accurate. So my rise, I end at 20 and I started at 5. So it went up 15. And then my run is how far I went over, which would be 5. So my slope then is three. And then my units for that, if I, how far I went up on this graph is in meters and the over is in minutes. So this is three meters per minute. Was his speed constant over the entire interval? How do you know? Uh, yes, his speed was constant. Um, and I know that because the slope doesn't change. In other words, it's a straight line. And when it's a straight line, the slope stays the same, which means your velocity stays the same. The next question is, where did Chris take his first picture? Um, so the first picture he took was at time zero. And so I can look at my y-intercept for that. So looking at the graph at time zero, um, it's at five, set, five meters. So I'm looking at the y-intercept. And then it says to write a mathematical expression or equation that describes Chris's motion. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. And instead of y, I need to use my y variable, which in this case is x. And that'll be equal to my slope, which we figured out in part c is 3 meters per minute times, instead of x, I need to use my x variable. So here my x variable is time, so I'm going to go times t. And then I'm going to add to that my y-intercept. My y-intercept is right here of 5, and that was 5 meters. And there we are.